Good morning, dear friends. Let's solve October November 2022 Component 22 MCQ paper 0625. Okay, let's look at the first question. They are asking which device are uh, most suitable to determine the volume of about 200 ml of liquid and uh, diameter of a thin wire. So of course we need a measuring cylinder to measure the volume of 200 ml liquid. To measure the diameter of thin wire, we can actually use it ruler, but it will be not accurate. So micromet micrometer screw touch. So the answer is for volume measuring cylinder and for the diameter of a thin wire, micrometer screw touch. So it's A. Let's move to next question. The diagram show speed time graph for four different bodies moving for six seconds. Which body travel the least distance? So what what is the distance traveled in area uh, speed time graph? It's just area under the curve. So we want which body travel the least distance, which means we want which is the least area under the curve. So we have to look out for four uh, areas for four options, which is the least one. By looking, it's obvious that uh, C and D are not least because just by looking, we can say that they have more area than A and B. A and B it's little uh, tricky because they almost look like same. So we have to calculate the area under the curve. So let's calculate A. So it's like triangle. So the area of the triangle is half base into height. So base is 6 and height is 8. So it, it has 20, 24 small units. So 24 meter it has traveled. Option B we have the big triangle base is 4 height is 8 which is 16 meter and the small triangle base is 2 and height is 4 so 4 meter totally we have 20 meter so B is the least distance one B has the least area so B is the answer next which statement describes the relationship between mass and weight ok so which uh, formula we know that uh, describes the relationship between mass and weight of course it is uh, weight is mass into gravity so I think option B and D includes magnetic field so both are uh, nothing to do with this question A mass is the effect of gravitational field on weight and weight is the effect of gravitational field on mass so mass is not the effect Sorry, mass is not the effect of gravitational field on weight. Weight is the effect of gravitational field on mass. So, C is the right answer. Yep. The diagram shows four pieces of laboratory apparatus. We have a balance which can measure mass. We have a measuring cylinder which can measure volume. We have a ruler which can measure length. We have a stopwatch which can measure time. Which pieces of apparatus are used to find the density of a liquid? What is density? Density is mass divided by volume. So we need to measure mass and volume. So out of this, we can measure mass using the balance and we can measure the volume using measuring cylinder. So B is the right answer, balance and measuring cylinder. But a small note, if it is a cube or perfect shape of something like cuboid or something, then we can use the ruler to measure the volume. But balance and ruler combination is not here so only balance and measuring cylinder is here so option b is the right answer yep the diagram shows a meter rule m n on two supports p and q so p and q we have two pivot two loads are placed on the ruler rule as shown two loads are there the rule sets steadily on supports which mean it is in equilibrium which row is correct Total moment, so we have two things, total moment about M, total moment about N. The ruler is steady, which means it's in equilibrium, there is no resultant moment. If it is in equilibrium, one condition, the clockwise moment is cancelled by the anti-clockwise moment. So the net moment about both point is zero, that's the case. So which option is both point zero? Option D is zero. 
if any one of the other option is true for example uh, total moment about m is clockwise and total moment about n is clockwise then it will oscillate okay but it's resting so it's zero there is no net moment existing as now yep the diagram shows an object moving at a constant speed in a circular path in the direction shown a force act on the object to keep the keep it in the circular path in which labeled direction does the force act does this force act when the object is in the position shown okay so it's in a circular path so obviously the force is towards center for an object remain in circular path the acceleration must be towards the center of the circle okay so you can compare this with planet motions for example uh, earth is orbiting the sun the which provides the force the gravitational force of the sun provides the force for the earth to be remain in the circular path a trolley of mass 4 kg traveling with a velocity of 4 meter per second collides with a trolley of mass 2 kg okay we have first one 4 kg traveling with 4 meter per second to the right direction we have second trolley with a mass of 2 kg traveling to the right 2 meter per second after the collision the velocity of the 4 kg trolley is reduced to 3 meter per second okay what is the velocity v of the 2 kg trolley the second trolley after the collision so whenever this momentum question is arriving the mantra we have to remember is total moment momentum before collision is equal to total momentum after collision so what's the total momentum before collision uh, m into u m1 into u1 plus m2 into u2 so which is 4 kg multiplied by 4 meter per second which is mass and velocity of first trolley before collision and 2 meter per second multiplied by 2 kg which is mass and velocity of second trolley before collision should be equal to 3 meter per second into 4 which is mass and velocity of first trolley after the collision here the mass is not changing because mass is same plus velocity which we have to find multiplied by mass 2 kg so this is just baby math we rearrange this equation for velocity which is 20 minus 12 divided by 2 which is 4 meter per second so 4 is the answer option b an object falls towards the earth surface what happens to the gravitational potential energy and to the kinetic energy of the object so we know that the gravitational potential energy is mgh so as h decreases the gravitational potential energy will decrease so both c and d are wrong because they state that gravitational potential energy will increase so they are wrong now we have a and b gravitational potential energy is decrease will decrease that we are sure what happened to the kinetic energy kinetic energy is half mv square as the velocity increase the kinetic energy will increase as the object falling down toward down toward the surface of the earth the velocity will increase so the kinetic energy will increase so kinetic energy decrease option is also wrong a the remaining option b is the right answer as the object fall towards the earth surface the gravitational potential energy will decrease as it falling and then the kinetic energy will increase as it falling a boy takes 0.60 second to lift a book of mass 0.60 kg from the top of the desk so we have top of the desk a book been moved from top of the desk to shelf the top of the desk is 0.80 meter above the floor and the shelf is 1.7 meter above the floor the gravitational field strength is 10 newton per kilogram which power does a boy develop so by this mean they are asking just which power used to lift the book from 0.8 meter height to 1.7 meter so what's the height difference what is power power is work done or energy divided by time so book is initially in the top of the desk then it's moved to the top of the shelf at what height the height difference is 1.7 minus 0.8 which is 0.9 meter so book been moved 0.9 meter vertically up so the work done is force into distance against which force this is moved against gravity so force is mass into gravity this force is mass into gravity 
so mass into gravity into distance divided by time what is the distance 0 0.9 meter what is the time 0 0.06 sorry 0 0.6 second so mass is 0 0.6 kg gravitational con uh, field strength is 10 newton per kilogram so the height is 0 0.9 meter so if we do the math 9 kilogram meter square pi divided by second cube so option c nice a mass is lifted from a mass is lifted from rest on the ground to y there is no air resistance p is the increase in gravitational energy of the mass q is the kinetic energy of the mass at y which expression is equal to the mechanical work done on the mass so this is somehow related to the previous question that we have seen uh, like falling towards the surface of the earth what happens to the gravitational potential energy and the kinetic energy but this is different so first we are increasing the height so obviously the mechanical work includes increasing p gravitational energy also its kinetic energy so the total mechanical work is increasing potential energy plus the kinetic energy so p plus q is a answer uh, anyhow i have gave the description so you can read so a is the right answer p plus q nice the diagram shows a tank containing sea water the density of the sea water is 1020 kilogram per meter cube what is the pressure at point p relative to the atmospheric pressure so we have to find the pressure at point p so what's the pressure in the liquid that we know it's rho into g into h rho is density g is acceleration due to gravity and h is the height now the height they are not asking at the bottom of the tank they are asking at point p which is 60 centimeter above the tank so we have to calculate that height so 8 meter minus 0 0.6 meter so if you don't calculate so directly minus 60 then you will end up in negative and that's wrong so si units has to be used here 60 meter is 60 centimeter is 0 0.6 meter so which is 7.4 meter and rest is just math so i'm just replacing the things with formula so thousand one zero two zero kilogram per meter cube is a density 10 meter per second square is a gravity acceleration due to gravity and h is 7.4 meter and that's uh, 75480 kilogram meter inverse per second square so one pascal is one kilogram meter inverse second power minus two so that's one pascal so the answer is option c if you round it off 75000 pascal above atmospheric pressure nice the pressure of a fixed mass of gas in a cylinder is measured the volume of the gas in the cylinder is slowly decreased the temperature of the gas does not change which graph shows how the pressure of the gas change during this process maybe we can go elimination so let's look at option a and option d option a pressure remains constant that's wrong option d pressure is decreasing so both are wrong okay let's look at uh, b and c in the b initial pressure is zero when time is zero the pressure is zero so that's wrong so initially they have it has a pressure if there is some substance there will be a pressure no zero pressure so only c is right answer okay in other way you can explain from constant pressure if you are decreasing the volume the temperature should increase if the temperature is not increasing meaning that the pressure is increasing so c is the right answer nice wet cloths are hanging outside to dry what are the best conditions for the cloths, uh, cloths to dry most quickly in rainy day no so we have to have the temperature high because we know higher the temperature difference faster the temperature drop rate so temperature has to be high the wind speed also has to be high because the faster the wind more energy can be carried quickly from the clock transferred okay so high wind speed means more molecules molecules carrying more energy from the cloth high temperature means high temperature different so quicker dry of cloths so option a is the right answer 
nice which change in a which change in the design of a liquid in glass thermometer makes it more sensitive a longer tube option b will make the range higher a wider tube will make the range shorter also insensitive uh, less sensitive a smaller liquid reservoir will be also make it less sensitive a larger liquid reservoir will make it more sensitive so option a is the right answer yep a uh, scientist is determining the specific latent heat of vaporization of a liquid he puts the liquid in a vacuum flask and heats it with 100 watt heater the mass of the liquid in the vacuum flask when it starts to boil is 300 so initial mass is 300 g he continues to heat the liquid in further 12 minutes after which the mass of the remaining liquid is 100 g so 200 g of liquid has evaporated what is the specific latent heat of vaporization of the liquid so we have to assume that all the thermal energy from the heater is used to vapor vaporize the liquid no environmental leakage as uh, no energy to the surrounding so what's the formula so the energy is change in mass multiplied by latent heat of vaporization so i'm just rewriting this equation for uh, latent heat of vaporization lv equal to e divided by delta m to find the e energy so what's given the power is given so what relates power and energy so power is energy by time so energy is power into time how much power use 100 watt for how long 12 minutes but we have to convert it into 12 uh, sorry seconds si unit so 12 minute into 60 second so the energy is 72000 joule we know the change in mass so 72000 joule divided by from 0.3 kg to 0.1 kg so the answer is uh, yeah you got it 360000 and uh, option d if you fail to convert minutes to second you will exactly end up with 6000 option a so that's wrong wrong way to do it next which piece of equipment is designed to produce a type of electromagnetic wave we have electric fire electric generator electric motor and electromagnet electromagnet does not produce any electric electromagnetic wave no option d electric motor so its function is to give force rotation torque so no electric generator produce current but current is not an electro- electricity is not electromagnetic wave so electric fire fire produces light so light is an electromagnetic wave so option a is the right answer nice a sound wave travels from air into water which row describes what happens to the frequency and wavelength of the wave we know that the frequency stays the same but still sound is speed of sound is different from air to water so something has to change so which wavelength what happens when it goes from air to water so water is denser medium so the wavelength will increase so the frequency stays the same the wavelength will increase option d the diagram shows plain uh, water waves in ripple tank passing through a gap between two barriers and spreading out okay which name is given to this effect obvious diffraction option a is the right answer a ray of light travels from air into a material as shown okay what is the refractive index of the material okay so we have f- to find the refractive index so the angle given is material to the ray so it's not the incident angle so we have to find the incident angle which is 90 minus 40 degree 50 degree so incident angle is 50 degree incident an- angle in uh, incident angle is something angle between the ray and the normal normal is perpendicular to the surface yes so 
refractive index n is sin i divided by sin r i is 50 degree r is 27 degree so sin 50 degree divided by sin 27 degree uh, which is if you use a calculator 1.687 if you round it off we get option c 1.7 but if you made a mistake refractive uh, angle as a sorry incident angle as a 40 degree instead of finding it 90 minus 40 degree 50 degree if you directly use 40 degree then we will end up it in 1.414 option a that's wrong answer wrong uh, wrong option yep the diagram shows an uh, object in front of a plane mirror at uh, which labeled position is the image of the object formed so we are uh, we have to look the object we will see it in b so b is the right option the angle between an incident ray at the surface of a plane mirror reflecting is 70 degree what is the angle of incidence so this we did it as a part of the previous question do you remember that question so we have a plane mirror here so the angle between the incident ray and the plane mirror is 70 degree what is the angle of incidence they are asking so 90 minus 70 which is 20 degree so this is a clue to that question or this question can be asked and as, uh, answered from the knowledge of that question yes more frequently we can see this kind of questions in the Cambridge MCQ one question is connected to another next the diagram shows the air molecules in the in part of a sound wave at a particular moment in time so now it's actually wave is propagating now they have passed and this is what we will see which statement is not correct earlier there was a com uh, compression at x of course it's right so how this wave will propagate they will do compression and rarefaction meaning that all the particles will move close to their one point that point is now frozen and so on and then they will move away and then they will move close to uh, close to each other in another point that's how it propagates so later there will be a refraction at x that is also true this part of wave is traveling horizontally across the page uh, yes so it can travel horizontally across the page left side or right, right side both are true okay this part of the wave is traveling towards top of the page which is definitely wrong so d is the right answer if you are not using eliminating method just by looking you can directly tell d is a wrong answer because the part of the wave is traveling towards top of the page which means uh, the propagation is perpendicular to the oscillation of particle so that's a property of a transverse wave but this is a longitudinal wave so d uh, i mean d is uh, not correct so it's a right answer an object is reflected in a plane mirror which description of the image is correct diminished and real enlarged and virtual same size and real same size and virtual of course we will see the same size and virtual image why it is virtual because it cannot be projected in a screen so every day we are looking at a mirror if it is a plane mirror we will see exactly the same size as as our face everything yes nice a uh, hundred meter race is started by a fire by firing a gun the gun makes bang and a puff of smoke at the same time when does the finishing judge see the smoke and when does he hear the bang okay so question comes to a light is produced and a sound is produced so observer who is the judge is at some distance when he will see the smoke when he will hear the bang of course light travels faster than sound so he should see the light first see the smoke first and then he should hear the sound so option a and uh, c is wrong answer because one it says 
he almost he hear it almost immediately no that's wrong option a c he see the light after 0.3 second no it's wrong so option b and d d is wrong because he will see both at the same time he see and hear no so option b is the right answer he will see the light almost immediately he will hear the bang after 0.3 second why 0.3 specifically is because it's 100 meter distance and the speed of the sound is 300 meter per second so he will receive it in 0 he will hear it in 0.3 second yes so option b is the right answer two magnets x and y are placed end to end on a bench the diagram shows the magnetic field pattern between the poles of the magnets which rows which row shows the direction of the forces exerted on x and y by the magnetic field okay so it's clear that uh, x north is right side and then y south is left side so it's attractive force so magnet will ex x x magnet will experience force towards the y y magnet will experience a force toward towards the x because it's attractive force north and south so b is the right answer the diagram shows a circuit used to control the potential difference across a lamp the variable resistor is adjusted until the potential difference across the lamp is 6 volt the current in the lamp is 0.5 ampere what they are asking what is the resistance of the lamp okay we know v equal to ir so i is v divided by r v is 6 volt divided by 0.5 ampere that's the current is so it's just a uh, 12 ohm yep option d is the right answer 12 ohm a charge q flows for time t through a resistor of resistance r which equation gives the current i in the resistor so charge is current multiplied by time so q is i multiplied by t so i is q divided by t that's all option c is the right answer a plastic rod is rubbed with a dry woolen cloth the rod becomes positively charged which statement is correct the rod becomes positively charged means the electrons have gone from the rod to the cloth so option b is right answer if if we if we are going elimination method c and d has nothing to do with because it involves proton okay since it's positive it's moving since the rod is positive so the electrons is moving electrons are moving from the rod to the cloth so a is also uh, not right answer b is the right answer nice which diagram shows a graph of current against voltage for a filament lamp so current against voltage graph for a filament lamp now option a is wrong because for infinite voltage you will get a uh, same amount of current that's not going to happen option b is wrong because if the voltage is infinite current should also be infinite no okay option c is also wrong because for certain amount of voltage you will need uh, you will meet infinite current only doesn't matter how the voltage increase the current should saturate so option d is the right answer even if you increase the voltage because of resistance the current will be not increased so d is the right answer each potential divider is placed in a circuit with a power supply a b c d okay bo which potential divider makes the potential difference across the component y increases when the light intensity increases okay so option c and d we can remove because that's not a simple for ldr okay because this has to do with the light so we have to have a ldr light dependent resistor so we have option a and b 
whose symbol is right. We want to increase the potential difference across the component Y, meaning that we have to decrease the resistance of X. So X should be the LDR. So option B is also wrong. So A is the right answer. So if more light means less resistance in X, so the Y's potential Y resistance will be higher. More the resistance, more the potential difference. Option A is the right answer. Diagram 1 is a circuit diagram shows showing an AC power supply connected to a 4 diode and a resistor. Diagram 2 shows the output voltage from the power supply. Okay. Which graph correctly shows the voltage time curve across the resistor R? So simply this is a full wave rectifier. Though we, we haven't seen this thing uh, detail in IGCSE, we will see it in ASA level physics, full wave rectifier. So what it does is uh, generally um, remove all the negatives and convert them into positive side of the voltage. So there is no negative side of the voltage. Since it's full wave rectifier, it will con uh, it will actually convert entire full wave into DC, AC to DC. So option B is the right answer. Obviously A and C is wrong because they have negative voltages. D can be right answer if it is a half wave rectifier, if it has, if it is only with two diodes. Okay. Which diagram shows the circuit symbol for a fuse? So D. If you want to learn about symbols, uh, please refer your syllabus last page. For ATP and practical, they have gave the symbol. You can use it. The diagram represents an alarm system using a logic gate. If the temperature sensor, the data for the system is shown. Temperature sensor is cold, 0, hot, 1. Smoke detector, no smoke means 0, smoke means 1. Siren, no sound means 0, sound means 1. The siren should sound when there is any indication of fire. So if it is hot also it has to sound siren has to sound if it see small amount of smoke also it has to sound if okay if any one happen it should sound both happen also it should sound so which logic gate has to be used we have to use the R gate because 0 0 is 0 0 1 is 1 1 0 is 1 1 1 also 1 so any case we want it to be sound so B is the right answer so it's simply R gate Four small compasses are placed around a solenoid. A current is now switched in the solenoid. Which diagram shows possible new direction of the compass needles? Okay, it's just a coil, so temporarily it will behave as electromagnet. What is the possible of current direction and coil? So simply you can eliminate A, B, C because a both are perpendicular towards the coil. I mean the coils in uh, the needles in the center. That's what we are looking at. Okay. So the magnetic line both will be same direction, both up and down. So D is the right answer. Why? Because this is how magnetic field look like if current goes from uh, left to right. So only in option D. Both needles up and down are facing same direction. Yes. So option D is the right answer. Transformers are used in the transmission of electrical power to houses. Which type of transformer is, transformer is used at the power station prior to the connection to the power lines and which type is used to prior to deliver delivery into the houses? So why they are using transformer because we have to step out, step up the power uh, voltage to send for long distance because higher the voltage, uh, lower the power loss. So in the power station, it's step up. In the home, it's step down. So option C is the right answer.
the diagram shows an ac generator rotating in a clockwise direction okay we have magnet ac direction and then the current direction what are the names of part 1 and part 2 okay we have a part 1 and part 2 mm. actually we can eliminate c and d because part 1 is not a slip ring okay so c and d we can eliminate b we can eliminate because split ring commutator uses for dc generator not ac generator so option a is the right answer so one is brush and two is slip ring a thin metal foil is placed in a vacuum alpha particles are fired at the foil and most go straight through a very small proportion of the alpha particles are deflected through large angles what does this provide evidence for so this is simply alpha scattering experiment so we can conclude there is no neutron in each atom now we cannot arrive at this conclusion there are negative electrons in each atom no alpha particles are very small the only thing we are concluding from this is there is a tiny nucleus in each atom okay so if actually if we know about alpha scattering experiment then we can directly answer there is a tiny nucleus in each atom that's a conclusion they arrived thorium 230 is represented by the symbol 23090 th so this isotope is radioactive and decays to radium by emitting alpha particles which nucleate is produced by this decay so we have to write the equation so if it emits alpha particle means so other side should be the nuclear number should be 2 less sorry the proton number should be 2 less and the mass number should be 4 less okay so 226 by 88 so which has 226 by 88 ra so option a is the right answer The diagram shows a piece of apparatus used to determine the nature of the emissions from a radioactive source. The diagram shows a piece of apparatus used to determine the nature of, uh, nature of the emission from a radioactive source. The absorber, absorbers can be raised out of, raised out of or lowered into the path of the radiation from the source of the detector. So this absorber actually you can raise it or uh, keep it there. So we just want to see the difference for different absorbers okay so there is when there is no absorber in, I am referring to the tabular column when there is no absorber in use we have 350 okay when we place a thin paper we have 350 so nothing is reduced when we place 1 millimeter aluminium then it's reduced to half 180 and when we place lead 1 centimeter lead then the counter rate drop only 23 we are receiving so which type of radiation are being emitted by the radioactive source okay so what conclusion we can receive after thin paper no decrease in counter rate so actually alpha particles can stop by a thin paper so no alpha particle after the aluminum aluminum counter rate decrease so beta particles can be stopped by aluminium so beta particles are there after the lead also we can see small amount okay lead stops gamma not all the gamma but some so one centimeter lead and after 23 count rates shows that there is gamma rays also so option c is the right answer beta particles and gamma rays why there is no alpha because alpha can be stopped by even a small thin paper okay the graph shows the measured count rate of radiation from a source containing a radioactive isotope the detector is in a laboratory with no shielding from background radiation what's a measured count rate after the time uh, after a time of one half life so actually if we want to calculate the half life we will measure uh, we will actually find the background radiation and then we will remove it but what they are asking is what is a measured count rate after the time of 
one half life and there is no shielding from the background so we have to add the background radiation and the actual count rate so which is x plus y divided by 2 option d yes option d is the right answer thank you have a nice day